Bible. It seems as though the fulfillment of Bible prophecy is in overdrive right now as nearly every day another piece of the puzzle of the ages falls prophetically into place. You know, you don't have to be a Bible scholar to realize that the signs of the end of the age are unfolding all around us every day, just as they were in the days of Noah, just as they were in the days of Lot. But there's good, glorious gospel news in a world where there seems to be a shortage of anything good taking place. Here it is. God Almighty is overwhelmingly in control, and absolutely nothing is catching him off guard. Nothing's taking him by surprise. Prize. Every event, every calamity, every disaster does nothing but point the way to the glorious return of our resurrected and soon coming King. I'm so delighted today, my good friend, the magnificent senior pastor emeritus of Sheffield Family Center, a great Holy Ghost filled church in Kansas City, Missouri. He's a sought after teacher of the Bible literally around the world. And I like to think most importantly, he's a member of the Board of Trustees of World Harvest Bible College, soon to become Valor Christian College. First time I've had the opportunity to introduce him to our Worldwide Breakthrough family. Join me in welcoming Dr. George Westlake to Breakthrough today. Thank you, Pastor. So good to be here. Oh, I'm so delighted to have you. You know, Dr. Westlake has been studying Bible prophecy for decades. In fact, he made predictions based on his study more than really almost 50 years ago predictions that have been validated by history and I I want him to share just a few of those with us uh, Dr. Westlake tell us about some of those things that the Holy Spirit revealed to you from the Word of God so many years ago and then history catches up with those prophecies oh well, it's exciting to see uh, uh, the way I describe it prophecies taking place in warp speed faster yes, than the vehicles on yes. Star Trek it's the things I talked about my daughter's 49 she was two years old when I brought my first message at a certain church on Bible prophecy my goodness. and talked about Russia and the United States, Iraq and Iran, mm. uh, uh, the oil of the Middle East crisis. I actually called the name of the sermon, the name of the game is oil. My. And I had a deacon come up and say, you're a nice young preacher, but oil will never be that important. My goodness. And of course our world runs look, on oil. Look at where we are right yeah. now. It's actually happening. That's why Russia went into Georgia. It was the oil pipeline. That was the main thing. Exactly. And we are right there. I said way back then, there's enough oil under Russia that if the price of oil would get high enough, it'd solve all their economic problems. And so the name of the game is oil, but it's more than that. It's world domination. Mm. That's what it's all about. The biggest temptation of all is to be like God. And Satan's thing was, you, I'm going to exalt my throne above the throne of God. And Satan told Eve, you can be like God, knowing good and evil. Mm. And so it's domination and control. And I also said back then that oil would be so important there'd be wars fought over it. And the price of oil would be continuously a battleground and cause great catastrophe. But even way back then, I mentioned that there would have to be a united Europe. And united Germany would have to have a key role in that thing. Dr. Wesley, it, it seems, and, and it, I, I, I just kind of take a step back because we're speaking to so many people today that when you talk about a united Europe, that, that seems like what it's always been. When, when we talk about a un, unified Germany, that, that when we talk about those were things that you spoke of prophetically 35, 40, 45 years ago, the, the lay of the land then was very much different. That was, that was a, um, an overwhelmingly uh, unusual statement for someone to be making, but you made those statements because you dug them out of Bible prophecy. Right, the Word of God is accurate. When God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. My goodness. I know there's a group right now praying against the one world government. I say you might as well stop praying. That's God's right. Word said it's going to happen. That's right. And all the praying in the world isn't going to change it. No. It's the will of God. It's absolutely going to happen. You know, Satan offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he, he said, did. it's given to me. He did. And of course, Jesus turned him down. He didn't call him a liar at that point. Right. He turned him down. He's going to find the man that's going to accept it. My goodness. And so prophecy is facing that way. And so we're headed that direction. And, and so what, we, what, what most in this generation don't really realize is that they are actually at this moment living in the fulfillment of one of the major prophecies of the Bible. 
Oh, absolutely. The world government and the yeah. things that are taking place, the United Europe. And I've also said for years, this new world government will have the United States, Great Britain, and Russia as the three main military powers backing it. United States, Great Britain, Great Britain and Russia. Russia. Now, when I say Great Britain, and Britain, I include Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, yes. those connected with them. Yes. And then the seven strongest economic powers of the European thing. Because, you know, I, and I heard for years it was strictly a united Europe was, right. that was going to do all this. Right. However, the image of Daniel chapter 2 shows us the whole time of the Gentiles. It starts out with the head of gold, the silver, the... And when you get down to the... Uh, when you get down to the legs, they're iron. However, when you get down to the final kingdom, the feet, where the rock that fills the world hits the feet and destroys all this yeah. empire, it, it, it isn't all iron. It's part iron and part clay. So the Bible makes it very clear it's part of the old Roman Empire, but not totally the old Roman Empire. Because a, a lot of Bible prophecy scholars oh, it's teach your, the revived Roman yeah, Empire, yeah. but I, but now this distinction about the feet yeah, the uh, having the all clay. iron and clay right. means it's part of the Roman of Empire the Roman Empire and part something else. Absolutely, and you read Daniel seven, you see Daniel two shows the whole time of the Gentiles. Mm. Okay, and, and language even changes from Hebrew to Aramaic make in the second chapter of Daniel all the way to the end of the seventh chapter. Well, Daniel chapter seven, if you look carefully, shows the last four empires in Western civilization prior to Jesus Christ coming back. My goodness. And the last empire mentioned before that in the book of Daniel, uh, 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 in Daniel chapter seven is this 10 nation confederacy that the Bible talks about there and in the book of Revelation. And in Daniel, it's pictured as the lion and the bear and the leopard. And when you get to the book of Revelation, chapter 13, the Antichrist has a description of the lion, the bear, and the leopard. <laughs> and so this is not all the old Roman Empire. My yes, goodness. it's the economic power. Yes. And what I said way back then was the economic power of Western civilization would go to a united Europe, but the military power would still be with the United States. It would still be the most powerful military power on the face now, of the now earth. share that with us again. And Dr. Westlake, because a, a lot of folks wonder where, of course, America is in Bible prophecy, not yeah. spoken of by name, but share that with us again. Yeah, well, I think in Daniel chapter 7, uh, in Daniel chapter 7, it mentions the emergence of three empires. Mm -hmm. And you read most books on Daniel, they'll tell you it's nothing but a rehash of Daniel chapter 2, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Okay. However, this is written in Belshazzar's day where the Babylonian Empire has already been around over 100 years. And it says these kings shall arise. Mm. And when you read that chapter very carefully, the fourth kingdom is the ten kingdom confederacy. It says this fourth... And actually says there are ten horns, which are ten kings. It tells right. us it's ten kings. Right. It's the same government you find in the book of Revelation. And so the next one, it says, I saw the Son of Man came to him. You know, when Jesus said he was the Son of Man, I was taught in theology classes that just meant he was human. No, he was saying, I'm that Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7. The Jews didn't miss that. I'm the one before whom all the nations My are going to bow. Goodness. And so immediately after the fourth kingdom, that's when Jesus sets up his empire here on earth. And so the fourth kingdom is the is actually the world government under the Antichrist. So you have to look at who are the lion and the bear and the leopard at the end of the age. I see. And at the end of the age, it's not Medo-Persian, Persian, Greece, and Rome. And then other books on Daniel say, well, it's the four kings that followed uh, Alexander the Great. You right. read about the horn being right. broke off and four others. Well, the Bible... I know the Bible only has to do with two of those. That's the king of the north and the king of the south. Syria and Egypt. The other two are insequential. And yet it's just prior to Jesus setting up his kingdom. So it isn't that. It's the four empires uh, and they're in Western civilization that have the power before Jesus comes back. So you have a lion with eagle's wings. The yep. wings have been plucked. The man's heart's been given to it. You have the bear raising up on one side, devouring much flesh. And then you have the leopard with the wings of the eagle, the spotted leopard looking all four, all four directions at once. Wherever there's a problem in the world, they are there. Yeah. And then the Antichrist, when you read Revelation 13, takes these three nations. Through the three, he rules the ten. And through the ten, he rules the rest of the world. Thank you. I, I know our, our breakthrough viewers are saying, no, go back, go back, go back. Well, you can go back. You can get this broadcast of Breakthrough over and over again at rodparsley.com.